So you've got your data and you've got a basic understanding of how a model works. But how do you know if your data is the right data? And in a world of garbage in, garbage out, how do you know that you're just not feeding your model garbage? Well, we're going to explore which data is the right data and how to distinguish the treasure from the trash on this episode of Making a Modeler. Welcome back. So on previous episodes, you learned how to build your first simple model and how to build your first web scraper. If you haven't watched those videos, I would encourage you to start there before jumping into this episode. I'll put links up to them somewhere in this area. One of the things I stressed in those first few episodes was that you can't simply win just by creating a model or just by scraping some data. A model is only as good as the data that you feed into it. It's time to start to explore how to tell good data from bad data. And furthermore, even if you find good data, you need to find unique data or else it'll already be factored into the line. Ideally, we want data variables that will correlate to the end result that we're trying to predict. If we find what variables have a strong correlation and we can predict them, then we have a better chance of predicting the number that we can actually bet into. Too often in sports betting, people try to find data that supports a narrative rather than find a narrative gleaned from the data. It's always important to start your scientific method with observation and then build a hypothesis from that. I hope when you're done this episode, you're going to be able to explore correlation more and use it to spot the variables that have less correlation than you previously thought. It's probably a good time to point out correlation causation fallacy. Simply stated, all this means is that correlation does not imply causation. Here's an example of some extreme correlation causation fallacies. For instance, the letters in the winning word of the national spelling bee correlating to the number of deaths by venomous spiders in the U.S. annually. Or the divorce rate in Maine correlating with the per capita margarine usage. Or worldwide space launches correlating to sociology doctorates. Or the consumption of chicken correlating to the U.S. crude oil imports. Or my personal favorite, the number of people who have died by falling into a pool correlating to the number of movies that Nicolas Cage has starred in each year. Now, I'm sure nobody watching this video would ever try to use such far-flung correlations as those. However, if given a small enough sample size and a liberal enough interpretation of the data, you can talk yourself into finding correlation in just about anything. So it's important not only to use a large enough sample size, but also be rational in the conclusion that you draw from the data. So how do we actually measure correlation? Well, data science provides us with the Pearson's correlation coefficient, which is commonly represented by R. Now, if you're looking for a step-by-step -step explanation on how this formula works, you've come to the wrong YouTube channel. I'm a better. I'm going to show you how to use this in betting. I'm going to show you how to do this without actually doing any math work. I will, however, say that the correlation coefficient represents the relationship between two variables. A perfectly positively correlated pair of variables would generate a correlation coefficient of 1. Meanwhile, a perfectly negatively correlated pair of variables would generate a correlation coefficient of minus 1. And if the variables had zero correlation, well, then they would generate a correlation coefficient of zero. Pretty logical, right? Now, you may have heard of R squared as a way of judging how accurate a model is. Well, R squared is reached by taking the correlation coefficient represented by R and, yep, you guessed it, squaring it. Who said any of this data science stuff was hard? When you have R squared, you have the answer to the question of how much of Y's variance is determined by X. In other words, if we found that turnovers had a 0.88 correlation to the total in an NBA game, which they don't, we could square that number, which would give us R squared of 0.7744. 
we'd then be able to make the statement that 77.44% of the variance in an NBA total is determined by turnovers. So if we could project turnovers, then we'd have a good indication on the number of points that were going to be scored in the game. I wish it was all that easy. So let's head into Excel and I'll show you how to calculate correlation coefficient and we'll use it to analyze some more of the data that we collected in previous episodes. Okay, so here we are in Excel, and what we have on the screen here is the original data that we had from episode one, where we talked about building a model from three-point uh, data in the NBA over the course of this still current NBA season. And so what I did for today's episode, when we're talking about correlation, I decided to expand on this data a little bit. So I went back into my scraper, and I decided to scrape a little bit more data from each of the games from the NBA season, and it came up with this. So this is basically the three-point data, as well as field goals made and attempted, uh, offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, assists, turnovers, personal fouls, and of course the points scored for both the away teams and the home teams in a game. So we have a nice, big, rich data set now to work with here in Excel. And just for clarity's sake, I'm gonna zoom in here, and we'll just focus on the uh, home team data. So the way that correlation works is a very simple command in Excel and it's basically, and this is the same in Excel as well as uh, Google Sheets, is Corel for correlation. And you just pick which of the two columns that you want to see what the correlation is between them. So for instance if we want to compare uh, three-pointers made to the total points scored by the home team, then we just do uh, the N column and the W column, and in a few seconds it gives us the correlation between those two, which is about 0.52, uh, meaning about 52%. And that makes sense, right? Because the more three-pointers you make, the more points you're going to score. There's definitely a correlation there. So uh, for the sake of time, I've actually gone and pre-populated uh, the correlations for everything that we see here on the screen. So like we said, the three-pointers made is about a 52% correlation to the points scored. And you can see the rest here. You'll see that uh, this one sticks out, the field goals made. And of course, field goals made incorporates three-pointers made. And it makes total sense that the more field goals made, the more points are scored during an NBA game. Uh, you'll see that offensive rebounds have a slightly negative, almost completely zero, correlation, and, and that makes sense because the more offensive rebounds you have in a game, well, that means shots were missed, points weren't scored, and now we go back and reset, and, you know, they got the ball again, but they haven't actually scored any points yet. So you can see there's probably a zero correlation there, uh, all the way down. Uh, remember, I, I used turnovers in my early example. You see that actually that's the worst correlation here. It's almost a zero correlation. It's actually slightly negative. So what we have here, though, is um, the correlation coefficients for everything that is in the box score for the home team. And you'll notice nothing really sticks out. Well, that's sort of to be expected because just because something is in the box score doesn't make it actionable data. So that's corresponding to the home team. However, you also have to consider that actions of the home team would correlate to the points scored positively or negatively of the uh, away team. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go ahead and select the uh, away points from this same table, and I'm just gonna paste them over here, in, right here. So you have the home team stats, and you could just do the same thing here and correlate all of these with the away points and do them by hand, and you see each of these here is just choosing that column. But there's actually another way you can do this in Excel, and that is through the Data Analysis Toolpack. Now, the Data Analysis Toolpack is an add-in into Excel that's already there, uh, but you still have to uh, enable the add-in. So to tell if you have it or not, go up to your Data tab, and over in the Analysis section, uh, you should have Data Analysis. If you don't have an Analysis section, that means you don't have the 
data tool pack installed. And it's pretty easy to install though. You just go to file and go down to options and go to add-ins and go to manage Excel add-ins. You'll see the data analysis tool pack here will be in here under inactive applications. You go here to Excel add-ins to manage them and you just check analysis tool pack if it's unchecked and hit OK and then it'll show up in your data tab. So we can go into the data tab and we can run an, a correlation from in here. Now there's many different things in the analysis tools. We'll probably explore some of these in future episodes. Uh, but for now, we're gonna go to correlation. And what correlation does is the same thing as the corel command. However, we can give it a larger range and it'll make a nice pretty table for us. So in this case, we wanna correlate everything in these stats here from all the stats for the home team, how it correlates to home points and how it correlates to away points. So we're gonna select all of these columns, N through X in this example. And I'll put this spreadsheet in the description of this video so that you can uh, play with it yourself. And uh, we wanna say that our, our data has labels in the first row, so make sure that's checked. And then we're gonna output it. And in this case, I'm outputting it to a, another worksheet here, uh, just to kind of keep it a little cleaner than putting everything over in the margin. And once that's all finished, you can click OK. This will take several minutes to run because you are basically going through uh, all the data in this entire table, finding the correlation. It's a pretty intensive process for Excel to run. So if you think Excel has frozen up for a while, don't worry, it'll come back. It's just doing it all in the background. So uh, I'm gonna zoom ahead here and in the analysis tab, I have this already run. You see it creates this nice pretty table for us and we can see a, a matrix of how everything correlates in this data. And when we lay it out here, now we already know the home points correlation from that earlier work. The away points correlation doesn't really give us anything else. Uh, we see that there's a, a moderate negative correlation when it comes to defensive rebounds by the home team. Well, that makes sense. The away team shot the ball, defense uh, got the rebound, and now they have possession and that leads to lower scoring. So again, all of this adds up, all of this kind of makes sense when you think it through, and that's how you should approach this data in the first place is thinking through logically and making sure that these correlations logically make sense. So you look at all of this and you say to yourself, well, this was kind of pointless because the only thing here that really is highly correlated is the field goals made. And of course, that's pretty logical, but how am I supposed to predict how many field goals are gonna be made in the game? That's just as hard as predicting the points that are gonna be scored by the team. Uh, that is absolutely true. Everything I've done in this video series so far is not to feed you easy winners. It's to make you think on how to use these tools to then find the angles you need to find to win. Uh, for instance, you can look at these stats. Individually, they add up to maybe not enough to give you enough correlation to base a model off of. However, if you combine a couple of them together, you can use the combined correlation to find how that would affect the total points scored. And once you have multiple variables to go with, you can then start to do uh, regression analysis. Now we're gonna save regression analysis for a future video. However, it's a way of taking all of this data, combining it together, and seeing how it all works together to give you a more accurate projection. Another takeaway from doing this simple exercise is to say, what are some other forms of data that I can try to see if they correlate to the end result? Thinking outside the box is a great exercise to do for anyone who wants to become a modeler. For instance, there are two books that I've read that have used the correlation from video game ratings in Madden football to how that affects uh, projecting NFL scores. And in both those cases, there is a solid base behind their findings. Those two books, by the way, are Sharper by Poker Joe and uh, Picking NFL Winners by uh, Missouri Kanemoto. I hope I'm saying that correctly. 
they're both Kindle books. They're both under $10. And I'm linking both of those books in the description for this video. So there we have it. I hope you're going to use this information to explore how correlation can help you pick better data and use it as you further your journey in becoming a modeler. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and also give me a thumbs up. That helps the YouTube algorithm share this video with other people looking for similar content. That'll do it for this episode. I'll see you next time on Making a Modeler.